Hello, my friends, it's Eric. It's a new year and the tricks just keep getting trickier. Uh, last week, I received probably one of the most creative uh, and best phishing scams yet that I've ever seen. Uh, and I kind of want to share that with you and share some thoughts about how we can protect ourselves against threats that continue to get more advanced uh, as time moves forward here. Now, for those that don't want to watch the whole video, I'm going to give you the answer right now because I want you to go protect yourself and it's turn on multi-factor authentication. Uh, that is the single biggest thing here that could mitigate anything that I'm about to show you. Um, okay, uh, now let's talk about uh, what this email is that I'm talking about, what this phishing scam is, um, and uh, who might be doing this, and what the methods are, and uh, how they had to have compromised three different websites in order to make a email look legitimate, skip scam, spam filters, and end up in my inbox in a way that looks pretty darn legitimate. So I received this email here on my personal Office 365 subscription. Um, and uh, I use the business version of Office 365. I run my small business uh, and uh, also wanna uh, take advantage of some of the other tools and capabilities there. In my day job, of course, I also use Office 365 as well. So it's an easy case for me to have a consistent set of tools. And I got this interesting email. Now, there are a couple of very quick tells that would lead you to believe that this email did not really come from my HR department talking about my benefits policy. Uh, first and foremost, the fact that I own the subscription, which means I am the HR department. So that's a pretty big tell. But uh, assuming I'm a user at a company, uh, I wouldn't necessarily know that it's not really coming from HR. There is a second tell here, and this is kind of an interesting one. Note the from address is coming from an at fitsfit.com address. Now, that is a good bit of a tell there, um, but only if you're paying close attention. Uh, and uh, as we know, folks don't always pay super close attention to those kinds of minor details. The rest of the email largely looks legitimate. Um, what they've done is they've made this very targeted. It's not uh, your um, uh, African prince just looking to send money. It's very specific. It's to Eric, which happens to be the start of my email address. They've done some logic to figure out that that's probably my name. It's a good start. Um, and they've used the organization name, which of course most companies use their organization name in their domain name, in the body of the mail. So it kind of looks legitimate. Um, it, and the English is reasonably decent. It's not uh, immediate tells here. Um, and it even has fun things at the bottom, like a confidentiality statement. Um, so, of course, I, I did know by some of the tells that I mentioned a moment ago that, that this wasn't legitimate. Um, but this was uh, specifically interesting in that it missed all of the spam filters, uh, which are nowadays are really good in Office 365, and it made it, my, made it to my inbox and it didn't get flagged as clutter or anything, it made it through as a legitimate email. So I asked the question, why? And I started digging into this. So of course what I did is I spun up a throwaway VM and I started digging into what sits inside of this HTML attachment that's sitting on this thing. It's not even a link, it's not trying to get me to click off to a website, right? What is this HTML thing? Let's go open it up. Um, first of all, Let's go figure out what FitzFit is, FitzFit.com. Um, and uh, apologies to Doug Fitzgerald and uh, your team Beachbody. Um, I, I would like a Beachbody. Uh, but this is a legit website. Uh, this is a real place. Um, so I got an email that looks like it came from FitzFit.com. Um, and uh, interestingly, the address wasn't spoofed. Well, how do I know the address wasn't spoofed? Well, I can go in and look at the message headers and look at SPF and I can say, you know, this actually came from the right place. This is a SPF pass, which, which means that it's not sent as a spooked address. It's sent as a confirmed address as somebody who has the authority to send for fitsfit.com. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, what was it sent with? It was sent with PHP Mailer. Well, why, why does the XMailer head, header tell me it was sent with by PHP Mailer? What that says to me is that FitzFitz's website was compromised and an attacker was able to upload code into their website 
that sent the email as their website. Presumably the website has the ability to set up email. It's a legitimate source of email for their domain because of course people use their websites to send email. As a result, it passed. Not spam, spam confidence level one, which means that we have a high degree of confidence that this is not from a illegitimate source. And it's a legitimate piece of business email because for all intents and purposes, if fitsfits.com website sent me a piece of email, it would look exactly the same. It would pass through the same way. Um, so some of the biggest and best tools that we have to pick up spam were completely bypassed because that website is now under the control of a hacker. Okay, so somebody just hacked the website and sent me an email, right? I mean, that should be pretty easy to go in and figure out the next steps there. I just need to reach out to the website owner and let them know. Um, let, let's go open up and, and figure out what's, what's uh, inside the body of that, uh, um, uh, of that email message that was attached, or excuse me, the HTML uh, message that was attached to that. And I go in and I take a look at this and I notice something interesting. It's a refresh, redirect, uh, that, se that sends me to another website. So instead of clicking on a link, it's an attachment, and that attachment opens up my web browser and then redirects my web browser to a link. Uh, same result, but now the, uh, of course, what we tell people, don't click on links in your emails. Uh, this is a uh, similar way to do that, but uh, miss the, what the, we've trained them to do. And something else that's really interesting here in the email body and where this is redirecting me to, notice it's redirecting me to saratogadramagroup.com, and we've got a, uh, redirect base 64 email, some hash key here. Okay, this is now getting pretty interesting. I, I gotta go figure out what this thing is. What is Saratoga Drama Group? Um, and, and why am I getting redirected to their website? Oh, it's, it's a legit Saratoga Drama Group. Um, this website is a little bit old, hasn't been updated in uh, what looks like about 17 years now. Um, uh, brings me back a little bit, but uh, otherwise this is a legitimate website. Um, so, all right, why am I getting redirected to this legitimate website? What is that URL thing that they're pushing me to? Uh, I gotta find out more. Again, from the confines of a protected throwaway uh, virtual machine, obviously it wouldn't go to any of these links or pull any of these things up um, in a uh, legitimate location. So I went in and took a look at what that link goes to. What, where does it follow to? What does it do? Well, that, that link really just redirects me to someplace else. That link does, now does a, another redirect from the second compromised website to utahpcgeek.us. Another website, a third website that I'm getting redirected to? Well, that's really interesting. Why am I getting redirected to this third website? Uh, did they really own a, a, and hack another website? Um, let's look in the detail of the URL that it actually pushes me to and redirects me to. Oh, Utah, I've got a legitimate security certificate now for utahpcgeek.us slash Office 365. Well, it's an interesting URL, um, but if I don't look at the URL and I just notice, hey, it's an encrypted connection and hey, this looks like a legitimate Office 365 login screen. It even has my name pre-populated on this thing. Well, that's interesting. How could it have my name pre-populated on it? Because it's running in a uh, throwaway virtual machine that I only just booted up for the first time 30 seconds earlier and uh, I will never use again. Um, how does it know that? Uh, so they've now done a redirect and they've done specific uh, variables that are unique to me um, that have now pushed me to the third hacked website so that I can have something that looks like a legitimate Office 365 login screen that I personally have logged into before um, and has a certificate on it, so it even looks like it's a legit place to log in. No, try and minimize the number of alarm bells or red flags that anyone could see here. Okay, well obviously I'm not gonna put my password in here, um, but uh, I gotta view the source of this. What's this page doing? How does it even know who I am or what I'm doing? Well, if I look at the source in this page, I find something fairly interesting. That form there 
is redirecting to itself. So it's another page, request.php, sitting on, on that web server, Utah PC Geeks. And it's got some variables in there. Specific variable that I care about a lot is my email alias. So it, it says, okay, use your email alias. Now I'm sure that came from that URL variable. It's encoded in there. Um, and then it grabs my password, whatever I enter into the form, and it sends an email off to a couple of email addresses on Yandex. So if I were to put my email in there, or my password in there, my username and password to Office 365 would be mailed off to these two Yandex accounts. The user experience is a, what looks like a pretty legitimate email. There's only a small number of tells. It gets flagged as not spam because it's coming from a legitimate source. It gives me a page that looks absolutely legitimate from a login perspective, has my username in it, is uh, encrypted, uh, and I just plug in the password and it redirects that, and uh, now my credentials have been sent off to somebody who knows where and who knows what they're gonna do with it. Um, this is pretty sophisticated. In order to do it, these folks had to compromise three websites and they had to write not just a simple spam mailer that sends out a bunch of please click these links and log in, um, but they had to have some level of sophistication so that it uh, filled out that initial email with things that look like they'd be legitimate HR information um, and uh, populate it all and make that experience look as close to legitimate as possible. Uh, I'm a bit impressed, to, to be quite honest. I mean, somebody could do better if they were doing a targeted attack. But for something that is uh, reproduce, mass re reproducible, they could send this off to a million people without uh, ever getting out of bed based on the, the code that they've put together here. Um, this, this is pretty good. This is a high degree of sophistication. This is not somebody who's just figuring this out for the first time and playing around. So the moral of the story is turn on uh, <laughs> turn on multi-factor authentication. You absolutely, it's 2020 now, you should have had multi-factor authentication on for years. It's been difficult in the past, um, uh, uh, but uh, the good news is Microsoft has made it much, much easier in Office 365, and the user experience is quite nice. There's an app, I do a yes and I authorize it, and then I can set it for a period of time so I don't even have to see it again, unless I try and log on from a new device. Um, so if I did this and I had multi-factor authentication turned on, uh, while they would have my password, and hopefully I didn't reuse that password anyone, anywhere else, they would not be able to access my account because they wouldn't have multi-factor authentication. So enabling multi-factor auth is beyond the scope of this quick little video that I wanted to make available to you, but I did want to share kind of the level of sophistication and some of the attack vectors here that were used. Um, and I'll include uh, down in the links below some uh, references that you can use to go turn on uh, multi-factor authentication on Office 365. This video is around Office 365, but uh, of course there are other ways to do this in other mail programs. Gmail has uh, options for multi-factor authentication, uh, others do as well. So anyways, I hope you find that help helpful and uh, hope you come join us here again. Thanks.